Hey everybody, Dr. Ben here, Functional Medicine Centers. Welcome, excited to talk to you today about Alzheimer's. Uh, pretty intense subject, but we're gonna get into the whys and why they're calling Alzheimer's type three diabetes. Uh, you know, for some of you, you've heard this, for some of you, you haven't, even those that have heard it may not truly understand what is going on. So thanks for joining us this evening. If you have not already, go ahead and like or follow, hey Lisa, good to see you, uh, our page. We've got tons of videos, we put out lots of content. Uh, hopefully it's all good usable stuff. If you have specific questions or specific topics you want covered, go ahead and pop that down below, send us a direct message and say, hey, can you talk on this, talk on that? I love researching if I don't uh, work on it specifically with patients or do, do those things in office all the time. Uh, we, I love researching and I'll get you as much information as feasibly possible. So uh, if you know anybody that has blood sugar imbalances or if they've got family members with Alzheimer's or are worried about it, go ahead and share this page with them as well. Uh, hey, Gandy, good to see you down there in Texas. For anybody that's jumping on, pop down below where you're uh, watching from, and uh, hey Julie, good to see you. Hopefully you made it back up to uh, Wheatland, and uh, Julie, we did a little uh, balloon procedure today, so tell me how that one's going. Um, we won't post any pictures on Facebook though, so pop down below where you're watching from. We'd love to see, uh, see where everybody's at, all the way from uh, North Dakota, all the way down to Texas, and everything in between, and even people from Mexico and Philippines and all over the world. So let Let's get into it and Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's has got to be, if you did like a survey of what's the scariest thing out there for people, uh, Alzheimer's is probably one of the top three to five if you talked about, hey, if you live long enough and you and your spouse or anybody and what are you really worried about, getting Alzheimer's is one of those big things that we look at that is definitely going to contribute to a lot of the fear, a lot, oh my gosh, what's going to happen down the road? Do we have enough money? All these different things. The stats show that at age 65, uh, a, uh, Julian, good to see you there in Alabama, at age 65, one in, uh, one in 100 people will have Alzheimer's. At age 75, one in 10 will have Alzheimer's. And at age 85, one in two. So if you're married, there is a very good chance that either you or your spouse, if you both, both live to 85, one of you will have Alzheimer's. And that is not fun. I always joke that it's like, well, which, which would you rather be? The one with it and you don't really care and you're kind of out of it and you know, whatever, doesn't really matter. Um, or the one with, without it and you know, you're still with it and doing well and all that, but you've got to deal with the one that has that Alzheimer's. So uh, the Alzheimer's is a degenerative condition. It's a neurological condition where the brain is starting to neurodegenerate. If you do a, a MRI or a brain scan later on somebody, you can see actually decreased size of the brain. And that is triggered by certain things. And what we know now is that a lot of that is being triggered by by the inflammation and inflammation coming specifically from blood sugar imbalances. If you saw my video on Monday, I was talking about uh, the top five tests that you need to run, blood tests that you need to run to look for COVID uh, concern. So whether someone's going to be at a higher risk of cytokine storm and some of these other issues. And so if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that one on Monday. We talk about insulin, we talk about triglycerides, fatty liver, a lot of these things that come about from the blood sugar being elevated. And that's why they're calling this type three diabetes, the inflammation that comes from uh, this elevated blood sugar, elevated insulin, is going to start causing many different pathways to break down. And one of those is neurologically. So you've, you've heard people having diabetic neuropathy in their hands and feet where they can't feel anymore. I had a patient, uh, her mom, put her foot in a shoe for a day and a half and the nephew had put a little army guy in there and mom walked on that for a day and a half, could not feel the army guy in her foot and it got to the point where it, uh, it ate it away and ultimately, um, uh, hold on Lisa, and ultimately they had to amputate that foot. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Can we have you order a, a test for out-of-state person? Absolutely. We work with probably 50-60% of our patients from out-of-state, so uh, we do this all the time, and so you don't have to be local to Colorado or our Phoenix location. We work with people all, all over the country. So yeah, just drop a drop us a line and we can get you get you squared away on that. So um, so that diabetic neuropathy is where you start losing sensation in the hands and feet. The nerves start to degenerate, and that's why people start losing their toes, losing their feet, all of these different things. So um, neurological degeneration in the hands and feet, the biggest nerve bundle in the body is your brain. So it's not a far stretch to say if somebody has diabetes, if somebody is dealing with this insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, all these things we've talked about, and they don't fix it and they live long enough, absolutely they're going to start to neurodegenerate in the biggest nerve bundle in their body, which is their brain. So what do we have to do? Well, the first phase of reversing and preventing uh, Alzheimer's is to get that blood sugar as stabilized as possible. And this is, this is able to happen even in six to eight weeks, we can reverse type two diabetes. We do it all the time. We've seen it time and again, people get off their insulin, they get off their metformin, all these different things if they play the game. Um, and this is what should have happened last March when they said lockdown and, you know, we got to wear masks, all these different things. Instead of just going, oh, hide in your basement, they should have said, you know what, you need to lose weight, you need to eat better, you need to stabilize your blood sugar, you need to get your inflammation down, you need to move your body, you need to do as much as you possibly can to get yourself in as good a state as possible. I, I put a, a note out this morning on Facebook and I said, uh, you know, the, the pandemic in this country is not the virus. The pandemic is the underlying health issues that we have as a society. That is the pandemic. That is why we're having the issues that we are. That is why we're having the problems. And you know, it, 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 if someone has perfect health, they are going to be in a lot better chance of getting over this without having any issues, especially on the metabolic side, especially on the blood sugar. So if you can stabilize that, we had a patient, um, she was actually in the hospital around Thanksgiving with COVID, uh, but she had already lost 20 pounds in our program. She was two months in, feeling better, blood sugar stabilized, all these different things. And, and we're pretty sure a lot of uh, her healing was because she had already done all these things. Even though she had to go to the hospital, had some issues, she was in way better, way better shape. Um, what is the ideal number for A1C? Candy, that is a great uh, question. And here's, here's where we're at. Hemoglobin A1C. If any of you have diabetes, let, give me a thumbs up if any of you guys have ever run your A1C before. A lot of people have, a lot of people haven't. But A1C is going to be the average of the last three months of somebody's blood sugar. Meaning uh, that where it could be high, it could be low. It just really depends on on where it was. Um, yeah, good to see you, Lisa. Thanks, thanks for the comment there. Um, so the A one C, remember, it's just the average of the last three months. It doesn't tell us what's perfect, what's right, what's good. It's the average. So when you look at pre-diabetes, it's 5.7. When you look at diabetes range, we're, we're talking 5.9, 6, you're creeping into diabetes. About the lowest I ever see is 4.5. 5.2 is an average of 103, which is really about kind of that perfect spot. But get this, I have some people that come in and their blood sugar at A1C is averaging at 5.2, 103, but they're swinging 100 points in one day. For anybody that's watched our videos, we know 85 to 110 is where you want to be, and we will see people swing from 160 all the way down to 60 in one day. Very, very stressful. But their average is 5.2, so it looks okay to, to their primary care doctor or whoever's reviewing that blood work. But we know once we start checking that blood sugar, they are swinging up, swinging down all over the place. That same person, they'll retest their their A1C and three months, 
and it's still 5.2, but they're only swinging 20 to 25 points all day long. So A1C is not the whole story. We test it just like we test insulin non-fasting, we test glucose, we test triglycerides, GGT, all of these different things, and we're trying to determine where that blood sugar is, but ultimately until you start testing your blood sugar, start checking it multiple times a day, you're not gonna know where it is, where it's swinging, what it's doing. I've got a pretty good idea because I've looked at thousands and thousands of these but ultimately you're not going to know where it is until you start testing it specifically so that was a great question so uh, above 5.7 we're pre-diabetic but even above 5.455 I know someone is averaging higher blood sugar than they should so uh, we can reverse type 2 diabetes in as little as two to three months uh, if somebody plays the game super easy drop us a line we we work with that all the time but they're calling Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes if you've got any Alzheimer's dementia in the family you've got that genetic predisposition you better get on it ASAP if you're worried about COVID you better get on getting this stabilized ASAP P, just like uh, I was I was commenting this morning the pandemic is not the virus the pandemic is what we are doing to our bodies and our underlying health status or lack of health so take action get going it's January it's a new year get out of that 2020 funk and take action on getting your life back drop us a line if you got any questions on how to do that watch our other videos check out our youtube channel over 300 videos on there you can search for lots of different topics but we love educating love getting the information out there make it a great day and stay strong guys bye bye